So Sarah, we have to start with the milestone. Congratulations on becoming the most capped player in women's rugby history and celebrating it with a try. <laughs> yeah, um, all I could think about at the base of that scrum was like, please don't knock it on, please don't knock it on. Um, but yeah, our, our front five did an amazing job in that and it makes my life easy at the, the back of the scrum just to sort of like flop over the line, a classic Sarah Hunter try. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been like a really special week and I think I've tried not to let it distract me from what was like the most important thing this week and it was about the team and about my contribution to the team and how we best prepare for like a really strong Australia side in the quarter final and I think for me the best way that I could sign this sort of like milestone off was to get that win and to get into the semi-final so I think now I can take a step back and reflect on it and yeah just try and soak it all up but it's it's been pretty surreal and I've had some amazing messages and support and yeah I've now I've got to take the time to to reply to them to thank them you know ex teammates that friends family all the people that have helped me on my journey and without each and every one of them like I wouldn't I wouldn't be stood here today I wouldn't be part of like an amazing Red Roses like team that has enabled me to, to reach a 138 cap so without them I'm nobody and like I've got everything to, to thank them for and for all my coaches that have helped me along the way my friends and family my mum and dad from day one who encouraged me to carry on playing rugby you know it, it's it's all part of who I am the person and player I am and I'm sure you've had a message from Rocky Clark the player that you've overtaken, what did she say to you? Oh, she just was amazing, you know. She was like, there's no one I'd rather hand the, the baton on to. And it's a bit like me, like I made, so the, the best thing about these 138 caps is the, the, the friendships that you make. And she was like, about being an, a great player, but ultimately like that friend, that teammate, that person. And I think that's what rugby's about. And yeah, she was like, it was such a lovely message. Um, and I feel incredibly proud to have shared some really special moments um, with her along the way. And that's what you'll look back on uh, amongst all the, these caps. And yeah, she, she's just a brilliant person. And if we bring it back to today's game against Australia, England-Australia battles, no matter what sport, are always big. Yeah, they are. Like, it, it's historical in, in any sport, the, the Australia-England battle, whether it be, like, rugby, rugby league, cricket, you know, it's, um, it's always a, a tough battle out there and everyone goes for it and it's historical within sporting grades for, for games. So, yeah, we, we knew that it was going to be uh, a tough test out there and then you throw the weather conditions in and, yeah, it puts a different spin on it altogether. And what was the key to getting that victory today? I think for us, we've spoken about how we wanted to start um, and how we wanted to put pressure onto Australia. You know, we knew they had a very good start, especially against New Zealand in that first game. And we kind of, we knew they liked to play this expansive game and that they'll attack us at the breakdown. So we knew key areas where we wanted to get into them. Obviously, the weather then throws in, there's rain and then there was that rain. Um, and like, you think we should be used to it, but... Um, it, it was, yeah, it, it, did, it did add different dimension to, to the game, but I think we played in the right areas, we pressured them, and we gradually built that, that scoreline, and I think that's what we've got to, to be really pleased of, you know, especially in like, difficult conditions. There's, there's going to be errors, it's natural, but I think we, we stayed on top and we kept mounting that pressure on, and eventually the dam broke. That's it, I mean, you denied them really any time to build any phases, and I think it was. 25 seconds they spent in your 22 in the entire game, which obviously is pleasing from that aspect. Yeah, yeah, it, it was. I mean, and that, that's fundamental. We, we knew that they had some real threats and the, the best way of um, stopping them score is not let them anywhere near your try line. And, but, you know, they, they did get that, that try right before half time, so we knew what threat they could pose. So again, we spoke about half time playing in the right areas, putting them under pressure um, and just staying away from our try line, which again, the, in the second half we, we managed to do and it, it was an amazing um, team performance you know really proud of the effort that everyone put, put into that today and we saw again the success of your line out and the weapon that it is I think it's more than 20 tries in the tournament now have come from that 
yeah, you, you know, it's something that we, we've worked on over, over the years and we've just kept building and tightening up and um, we're, we're really proud, and especially as a forward, like, in terms of how, how dominant it can be and, you know, teams are going to look at how, how they stop that and that's fine, we'll find ways around that, but at the minute, you know, like, it's working, so we'll, we'll stick to that, but equally, you, we've got great backs that can finish tries as well, so we've got that variation and we pull on what we need to at the, at the right moment, but obviously today, a wet weather game, so we try to go straight through the heart of them. That's it, I mean, virtually all of the tries in the last two games have come from the forwards, so we haven't really seen the England backs in the last couple of games. Yeah, um, I think if something's working and it's creating opportunities for, for us to, to score, then like, World Cups are about winning, winning games, um, and you're not going to look back in years to come and go, oh, how did, how did England win, win a game? It's, they just look at the scoreline. And I think against South Africa, you know, the variation in the second half and, and some of the team tries, which is like the backs have a big job in putting us, um, in creating that and putting forwards in, in open play. You know, I think that's, that um, interaction when we go away from our, from our set piece it was really evident in that South Africa game and ultimately our backs put us in the right area. So they, they contribute. Yes, they might not get us over the try line if we're, if we're mauling, but you know, without them, we, we couldn't do that. And we're, we're a team that will we'll play the conditions and we'll play what's in front of us. And we know absolutely that when we need to strike and when we need our backs to fire, that they, they can do that. And that's four semi-finals for you personally. I mean, how does this one compare the effort that it's taken to get there? Yeah, you, you know, I think for, for me, obviously we've got we had the quarterfinals, which we've never had before, which was a, a really exciting like introduction um, for the Women's World Cup. Uh, we had three really tough pool games, you know, in different ways. Um, and for me, I think in in my experience with my previous World Cups, like it's the toughest pool we've ever had to try and get out of. You know, Fiji and the way they attacked us and the way they came to, to play, especially that first half. You play France, who are one of the best teams in in the world, and the attritional battle that was. And then you look at South Africa and and the way they attacked us and the, their physical game that they they um, showed up with, like. That, that was really tough to get out of, and I'm not sure we've had a pool quite like that in World Cups beforehand, so it takes its toll, and then you play Australia today, and I, I'm not sure the scoreline probably reflected in terms of how they how they did attack us and how they did come at us and how they defended at times, you know, like putting their bodies on the line. So for, for me, it, it's certainly been the most competitive we've had, and we've had to fight and we've had to problem solve and we've had to dig, dig, dig deep at times, but I think that will set us up nicely for, for whatever we get in the semi-final because we're going to get um, a great opposition that we're, we're going to have to face and we're going to have to work out in terms of if we want to get into that final. And what different challenge will either Canada or USA bring to England? Yeah, I think um, in some ways they they play pretty similar, you know, in terms of they're, they're very athletic, they like to move the ball around, obviously. Um, we play uh, with a lot of their players in the, the Premier 15s, you know, Canada, Canadians and Americans, so we, we do see a bit of them, but I think both teams are, are building through the, the tournament as well, so yeah, we'll, we'll look at them um, and we'll analyse whichever opposition uh, we do face, but we know that we're, like, we're in knockout rugby, they want to get to a final as much as we want to get to a final. Um, so we're, we're not taking anything anything lightly. We'll have to do our due diligence and we'll have to prepare um, like we would for, for any, any other game because you don't get any second chances now. That's great. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks very much.